This video is sponsored by Fictive, your partner for custom manufactured parts done right. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So tonight we're going to do a quickish tip on uh, Orca Slicer. We're going to be talking about organic tree supports. This is a feature that has just been recently added into the latest release of 1.7.0. So that is out of beta. It is actually the release now. So if you're interested in picking that up, I'll leave a link down below where you can go grab it. But also if you go up to your... Um, uh, if you're already running it, if you go to file and help and say check for updates, it should automatically come up. If it doesn't already, every time you log into this thing, it, it, it was notifying me like crazy. So I finally bit the bullet. I grabbed 1.7.0 because some of the other releases in between, 1.6.3 and now, have had a couple of issues. So I'm glad things are, are um, stabilized. So organic tree supports are a new feature that have been brought over from Prusa Slicer, um, <clears throat> uh, which is the great thing about open source uh, slicing software is you can snatch stuff from Slick 3R and Prusa Slicer or Bamboo and pick and choose what you want to sort of bring over from a developer's perspective into the build. So uh, the fact that this is here I think is great. Uh, organic tree structures are really handy, especially if you're working on organic type models like the Hulk here. So <clears throat> I remember way back in the day, it feels like a million years ago now when Kira came out with tree supports, uh, I used a version of this Hulk model or this Hulk model essentially to test that out. In a, in a video like a million, feels like a million years ago now. Uh, so it's a great model to do it on, you know, it's, it's a ton of detail, it's fantastic, um, and it's perfect for doing tree supports. Um, so here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna turn on, there's, we're gonna look at the, there's two methods. So they have turned on, uh, so we have the automatic tree structures, tree supports, and we have the manual tree supports. We'll talk about both. First off, we're just gonna make sure we're talking about the auto stuff here. And then some of the little tweaks and tunes you can do to sort of optimize what and where it's doing things. And then we'll talk about some of these features uh, and some of these settings. We probably won't go into like crazy exhaustive detail, but I'll give you the highlights on like the important ones. So uh, bring in your model over here on your processes tab. You wanna make sure you're on your support tab. You wanna make sure you have enable support checked. Otherwise uh, you'll be doing none of this. Um, under type, you're going to want to pick tree auto. So, uh, and then under style, you're going to want to pick organic. So prior to 170, you had these top four selections. Now we have organic in here as well. Not a huge difference between like tree hybrid or tree strong. Not, I mean, a little bit of a difference, but I, in the organic structures, I, they, you know, they, I think there's a reliance more on the, the tree trunk merging up to branches. Um, and I think that saves some time and some filament and some, some print time big layers. So anyway, it's a, it's a cool feature to do. The threshold angle, right? So that is the angle of the feature that it's going to support. And this is something that you can actually tweak and tune a little bit. I think it's probably behoove you to tweak it a bit. Otherwise, you end up with lots of branches and spots that may not require um, support. So why don't we go ahead and just slice this now. Then uh, this takes a second, so I'll probably pause. So here we go, we're all set here. So we have the organic tree supports generated here. Uh, and you can see there is lots of sort of um, alien face sucker activity going on here. Lots around the fingers, um, which is great. Maybe a bit of overkill, uh, especially down here, like around his legs and up in his hoo-ha, um, all that good stuff. So it's a little bit overkill. I'll show you how to tweak that in just a second. But why don't we go through some of these structures. So first layer density is specifically around the density of this very first layer of just your support structure. So remember everything in Orca and most slicers is relative to whatever tab or setting you're on. So if we're in the support tab and it's asking you about first layer density, it's talking about the first layer of the support. So if we go ahead and roll this all the way down, that 80% is in reference to uh, whether or not these lines are close together, is there some spacing in there, things like that. So at 80% density, it's like 80% infill, right? So there's going to be some space in between there. Not all your lines are going to be touching. So that's all that that does. Um, on the build plate only, that's what I have specified. So I don't want I don't want supports coming off an arm or a leg to support something else. In this case, I've told it to only do build plate. Uh, and I think that really works out the best in these organic tree structures if you can get away with it. Um, <clears throat> support critical regions only, remove small overhangs. Those are all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, raft layers, so same thing, raft layers. Do you want your supports printed on rafts? Totally up to you. I generally don't. I use that sort of textured build surface. Things kind of stick to that really well, like glue, and they, then it's easy to pop off. So I don't have a need to use raft structures. Depending on your build plate, you may want to. Um, uh, filaments for support. So 
what type of filament do you want to use for your raft structure? What what do you want to use for your uh, for your raft base, your raft interface? So if you want to use different materials, so if you have multi-nozzle, multi-material capability, this is where you can basically establish different filament types for uh, support material versus your object. So like, uh, so supports are comprised of two things, right? You have a base and then you have your interface layers. So what that gets into is like the actual support slash raft interface layer. So those interface layers, you can actually specify that as a different material. So if you have water soluble material, things like that, and you select this as a different type of material that you've specified in one of your other um, uh, uh, filament settings up here, then you can specify that there and basically rip the whole thing off, drop it in water, you know, uh, dissolve your, your uh, support layers and have this thing just pop off. So I do not have that. I am using PLA basically for everything in this case. So single nozzle, single material is what I'm going with in this case. And so to do that, when you have that consideration where you're using one type of material for everything, this is where some of this top Z distance and bottom Z distance matters, right? So top Z distance is what's the distance between the top of your support and the model it's supporting. So you want a little bit of an air gap there. So in order to make it a bit easier to pull off, you don't leave big old scars, uh, you know, on the skin as you're ripping things apart. Same with the bottom Z distance. So those two things are essentially uh, items you want to take a look at. <clears throat> You have lots of options around your, your pattern spacing and pattern angles, things like that. And then you have your top and bottom interface layers. So the interface layers are the layers of your supports that are touching the model specifically. And you can find out what those are because they're a different color. So you can see the lime green here for the base supports. And then down in here, these interface layers that are actually touching the object are this dark green support interface. So I specify two top layers of those supports. So I want to I want to call the top two layers support interface layers. And those are printed with slightly different settings, typically maybe a bit more um, uh, solid than the rest of the material. Uh, and that just helps with supporting the structure. So um, that is up to you if you want to use one, if you want to use 10, but you know, I, I generally in that case, uh, less is more, but not none, if you catch my drift. Um, normal expansion stuff, you know, how far do you want your supports away from your object? So I've got it at three millimeters. So that's essentially saying, you know, when you're printing out here, keep the supports three millimeters away. This is really dealer's choice. You figure out what works best for the model you're printing, but that's what that means. Don't support bridges. We've covered that before. So if you intentionally are printing a bridge, like just something like Golden Gate Bridge, right? And you've got a bridge and you can say, so you can say, hey, don't support the bridge. Uh, no, horrible example. In that case, you'd want to support the bridge. But if you're doing something like um, um, a temp tower where you've got a temperature tower and you have bridging in between and you're and you're testing a filament out to find out what temperature, uh, what bridge settings, uh, what cooling settings allow for your best of bridging to occur, then you would not want to support bridges. In that case, you'd say don't support bridges. Um, and then you have to reslice. Oh, I wish I would have done it. This is, but it is, this is really a memory hog and I have a decent, it's a decent machine. Tip diameter, this is a relationship to the tip of the trunk, right? Or the tip of the branch. How, how, how thick is the tip of the branch that you're printing? Uh, the distance of the branches between themselves, so one millimeter. Branch density, 30%. You can tweak this up or down. Uh, and that's probably all the super important ones that you need to go with. Now, where we had all of those different tree structures and stuff touching parts that were probably a bit overkill, in the automatic organic settings here, this threshold angle is where you can where you can really play the game. So let's re-slice this. We'll see what we mean here. Okay, so like in this case, we've got a lot of like face sucker alien action going on around his head, his eyes, his ears, stuff like that. Now, I know what my printer is capable of doing, right? So I don't feel like, and obviously I've printed this before, but some of these little overhangs around his hair, around his, around his brow, uh, things like that, I don't really think require support. Maybe up underneath his nose right there is fine. Um, I actually think it might get that as well, but definitely back here behind his hair, behind his ear, around his hair and stuff like that. So I think that this is overkill and would probably lead more to potential failures than anything else. So this is where you can actually tweak some things. So I'm going to change this threshold angle. I'm going to dump this down to something like 10 degrees. And then uh, once you do that, obviously you need to re-slice. 
So here we go. So now it's much, much more cleaned up. Um, under his chin, great. That's where it ought to be supported. Um, his fingers here, great. That's all fine. Probably this thumb's going to be a problem, I think, here. So you can tell from an orca slice or anywhere where you have this sort of super dark bluish purple stuff, you have some potential to have issues. I don't think it guarantees you're going to have issues, but it's the software trying to give you some pointers on, hey, watch out. Now, I think uh, even on this, if I'm printing this at a low enough resolution, like say a 0.12 or you know even a 0.2, I'm, I'm pretty confident I can get that overhang no problem. And so... <clears throat> You know, it's it's the software is being a bit conservative, but this is better. Uh, this is less less material, less printing, and I think it does a pretty good job. You know, probably up here again, I think overkill. Like I I know my printer's capable of hitting that overhang just fine if we're printing something like a 0.2 or even a 0.12 on a 0.6 nozzle. So the other way that you can sort of tackle this, I mean, again, you can continue to play with the thresholds, but then you could be leaving out other areas like we've just seen where. Now you want support. So we tackle that using the manual tree supports. Before we go do that, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Do you have parts you need to make that are outside of your current capabilities? Or are you finally ready to level up that part that you've been making in your garage and you need a fast and reliable manufacturing partner? Then you need to consider using Fictive. Fictive has a super easy process to upload and quote your parts. Whether you need CNC machining, 3D printing, urethane casting, even injection molding. When you use Fictive, you get access to a global partner network, super fast cycle times, guided expertise all along your journey, and consistent quality. You can even track the status of your production, including photos of your parts, inspection data, all directly through the Fictive platform. Use the link and the code below in the description for a discount off your first order, and it helps out the channel if you do so. Okay, welcome back. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and switch on back to preview mode here. <clears throat> and now we're going to swap this over from tree auto to tree manual. And if we slice right now, nothing's going to happen, right? It's not, nothing's going to, it's just going to slide normal. It's going to generate it. So you can see here, right? There's no, no supports, right? So you've established, you've told it you want to do manual. So you, what you really need now to go back and do is hit prepare, click your model. You want to come on up here to the uh, support painting mode. And this is where you can paint the portions of your part where you know you're gonna need it. So you can say, hey, overhangs only, like we can start there, or you can paint certain objects. So we wanna paint there. We wanna paint these fingers a bit. Um, I do think, oops, uh, I do think I probably want one underneath that thumb um, here for sure. Let's paint all that. Oh, control Z that. Uh, come on outside. Uh, you can you can specify here what you want to do. So underneath his chin, for sure, I want something. Um, and maybe I'm going to put one little boop on his nose, uh, just for funsies. I, I really think the rest of this, my printer can probably handle. So now if we go and we slice the plate from here, now we'll get a new result based on what we did. So there we go. Now it's really trimmed down the amount of supports, right, based on what we told it. It's doing its best based on the branch and tree structure that we've identified. So it's just hitting the areas that I have uh, painted uh, in the painter. And you can see here, of course, the dark layers are your interface layers. That is there to hopefully make it make these things pop off a little bit easier. I don't think it's ever really going to be to the point where it's going to pop completely clean. Let's, I don't know, you, your support interfaces may be way more dialed in than mine. <clears throat> but with any any organic structures like this, it's going to be tough. You're going to have a bit of cleanup to do. And that's, uh, you know, part of the fun sometimes. So, and, and the nice thing it does let you do too is identify, you know, it, it, in the preview, identifying these dark bluish purplish areas where it is still telling you, hey, maybe you should consider support. And then you can make the judgment call on if you really still do need to do that. <clears throat> so again, like under his, his eyebrow right there, it's I don't not required for my printer. So <clears throat> there you go. That's the organic tree supports. Um, I hope this is useful to somebody. It's a really slick feature. I hope you try it out. Uh, once again, uh, don't forget to check out our sponsor, Fictive.com. Uh, use the promo code Fisher3D to save 10% on your first uh, order, and it helps the channel if you do. Thanks a lot.